All right, so if you've seen the recent AJ Plus video on the measles outbreak in Minnesota, I believe there's some things you need to know. Seems this lady likes to get her statistics from the CDC. Well, the CDC, according to the British Medical Journal, lies to the American people and to the medical physicians as well. So I wouldn't trust everything the CDC tells you. She says that 100% of what the anti-vaxxers say, including myself, is nothing but a big old lie. And that Andrew Wakefield was the only researcher who ever claimed that vaccines cause autism, that his research study was retracted, and therefore that proves it. There's no other research connecting vaccines to autism. Well, if you go all the way back to 1958, the British Medical Journal published a research study showing that the pertussis or the whooping cough vaccine caused mental retardation and death. Mental retardation and death and mental retardation affected four boys to every one girl. Well, what do we know about autism in this day and age? We know that autism, a form of brain damage or mental health condition, affects five boys to every one girl. Just a coincidence there, folks. Nothing to see here, nothing to see here. Anyways, here's the research study she wants to use to say that vaccines don't cause autism. Funny enough, she left out all these research studies that show a direct connection between vaccines and autism. Here's her research, one of which is published by Frank DiStefano. Frank DiStefano was a lead researcher taking part in the CDC study published in 2004 saying that vaccines don't cause autism, for which now we have William Thompson, the CDC whistleblower. All right, just Google the CDC whistleblower and watch Senator Posey in front of Congress reading sworn testimony by William Thompson, the CDC scientist, confessing to committing fraud with Frank DiStefano. In a statement released in August 2014, Dr. Thompson stated, I regret that my co-authors and I omitted, omitted statistically significant information in our 2004 article published in the Journal of Pediatrics. End quote. So that guy, he's a big old liar. That's why they chose him to do this study. And this is a cherry picking study if you ask me. What they did is they measured antigens in vaccines. The antigens in our childhood vaccinations have gone down over time. But you have to ask the question, why have the antigens gone down? How have they gone down if the number of vaccines have gone up? If they just would have asked a simple question, the more we vaccinate, the more we see autism go up, there's a correlation, folks. You don't even need research, research to prove that. But they chose to measure the antigens because they know it was going down. They knew that for a fact. Why have antigens gone down? Only because of the use of adjuvants. Adjuvants such as aluminum cause autoimmune reactions in the body and autism is a form of an autoimmune condition for which the immune system attacks the brain. All right, they used adjuvants to lower the amount of antigens because adjuvants artificially stimulate the immune response so as the adjuvants went up, autism went up. Now, she also cites the New England Journal of Medicine with an author named Paul Thorson. Who's Paul Thorson? Oh, he's America's most wanted. Folks, make sure that you dial 911 and tell him you found Paul Thorson. Oh, he's in Denmark still waiting extradition to the United States for crimes of fraud in regards to the CDC paying him money to commit fraudulent research saying that vaccines don't cause autism. There he is on the Office of Inspector General website. The other study she mentions is the time trends in autism in the MMR vaccination in California alone. They say that because the rate of vaccination or the percentage of children receiving vaccines didn't go up very significantly or very much, but the autism rate skyrocketed. Therefore, the low percentage or low increase in percentage of children getting their vaccines was so small that it couldn't have caused such a significant rise in autism. Sadly, all they did was say, as long as the child got one vaccine, that's all that matters. So the percentage was only 14%, but they failed to mention that in nine, roughly 1987, just prior to 1987, they included a polio vaccine with aborted fetal tissue and boom, autism rates go up. Then they included a second MMR vaccine in 1988. And again, these vaccines had aborted fetal cells in them. 
And here's a 2014 study showing a direct connection between the use of aborted fetal cells in our vaccines. Every single time we included another vaccine with aborted fetal cell tissue in it, the autism rates went up even faster. Direct connection, folks. So let's look at our final study. Here's our final study. What they did in this study, you gotta pay close attention because again, it's cherry picking data. What they did is they evaluated the grouping of autism diagnosis and when parents noticed a change in their children, they wanted to see a grouping after vaccination. Well, they said there was a significant clustering of parental concerns about the development of autism in their children or the regression of the mental health of their children within six months of vaccination. So they found a statistically significant correlation between parental concerns and vaccinations. Now, after vaccination though, they said the ch child had to be diagnosed with autism within two years. That's from vaccination. But parents became concerned within the six months after vaccination. Once they're concerned, they gotta go find a doctor and then go through all the mess to get a diagnosis. They said the average time from concern to diagnosis was 22 months. They only included the timeline of one to two years after vaccination. So there they eliminated the majority of children for which the parents were concerned that the vaccine caused their autism. Again, a cherry picking study there, folks. She goes on to say that measles is a lethal infection. Who she get her information from? New York Times, fake news, folks. What's funny is if you actually look at the medical documentation, medical research, and medical journals, you'll find, again, I'm citing the CDC, but what's funny is what the CDC said back in the days of measles transmission and when thousands and thousands of children got the measles, they said it was a self-limiting infection of short duration, moderate severity, and low fatality. Doesn't seem too lethal to me. They go on in Science Magazine to say that the overall mortality rate of children who get the measles infection naturally, guess what? The mortality rate is between 0.1% and 0.2%. University of California says relatively mild illness may last two or three days. There's your measles infection. And that's the measles rash lasting two to three days. South African Medical Journal says in well-nourished children, folks pay attention to that, in well-nourished children who receive an adequate diet during the attack of measles, the effects are probably minimal and transient. So keep your children well-nourished and there's no need for a vaccination. All right, so here she uses the CDC statistics saying that 500 children every single year were dying of the measles. That's not exactly correct because if you go to the CDC's own website, you'll find that they show the stats on mortality from 1958 to 1962. 1963 was when we started the measles vaccine. Well, during those four years, it was an average of 432 children. Now, what was the rates doing prior to the use of the vaccine? Oh, we started vaccinating in 1963, as you see here, but the measles rate had already declined by 98%. Folks, 98% of the mortality rate had already gone away prior to the vaccine. And then the CDC states that it took 33 additional years after the vaccine until we saw no more children dying of measles. 33 years after the vaccine. Doesn't look like the vaccine really worked to me. She then tries to scare you into going and getting your darn vaccines by saying, hey, a measles infection could cause brain damage. That's not totally untrue. That's somewhat true, but the reality is, why didn't she mention that the U.S. Court of Federal Claims awards hundreds and hundreds of children or families of children millions of dollars to compensate for their children suffering brain damage from vaccines and as well as death? So now that you've been given the facts, the research, and the truth, make sure that you share it. Don't become one of the herd members like this lady with her little hog ring in her nose. You know what? I'm not part of the sheeple. I don't want you to be either.